welcome to the warm up. Talk about a good Friday. Two meters over there is the ambassador marker scale, and another two meters down there, Brentford women's gaffer Carly Osborne. How are you guys? All good, mate. Good International to see break, and we're back together. It's not a deal, but we'll take this, right? Yeah, we have to. We have to. We'll it's nice to it. be back and, and see both of you. You're looking well. We've missed so many celebrations. We missed Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's. Birthdays, happy birthday for the other week. Thank you. He's brought our joint again. present, yeah. haven't you? He brought his I, present. I, I think, yeah, I have. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, women's games back, yeah? Yes, yes, they um, are. Back. Crystal Palace, first game. Yep, yep. Uh, back at training on Friday, so it'd be good to get everyone back and, and get back to training and stuff. I've missed it, so it'd be nice to get all the girls back. Well, here are your fixtures, so we can have a little look at them now. Some big games coming up. Um, how's the league looking? Yeah, it's, it's looking good. I mean, it's. it's been changed because of what's happened so um, unfortunately there's no promotion or relegation but we're still going to do what we're going to do and we're going to aim to finish at the top of that table um, and keep challenging and make sure we just finish strong for the season. All eyes on the end of the season right, nine games to go, I know it's a cliche but nine cup finals um, and not only that we've got some exciting news haven't we boys? Someone say it! Have we? Have we? Have we? Yeah, what are we doing Tuesday? What's the news? Oh yeah, we're live! Yes! yes. Live What's the show, point? of course, of course. Of if course. we can't live. get up for it, how are we going to get them to watch it? You'll be up for it, don't worry yeah, about don't that. don't worry, we'll be ready to go. So that's right, so from every home game from now until the end of the season, we'll be live from match days in the new stadium. The three of us and some guests joining us on the way. We'll have some nice features, all the team news, all the chat as we build up to kick off. Unless, of course, the game's on Sky, because we're never going to compete with songs, are we? Let's be honest, let's be honest. Yeah, um, for notifications on when those live events are taking place and any other features on our YouTube channel, such as The Sting, which is back next week. Carly, what do we need people to do? Like, follow and subscribe. Get to know us so we can get to know you. Anyway, look, come on, let's go on to it. Um, this week we've of course had 14 players away on international duty and I've always wondered what goes on in an international camp. So, I mean, I could have asked, I could have asked Marcus, obviously, about that, but... You know, I thought, why not go direct to one of the players? And I spoke to Marcus Force live from Kiev to find out what goes on in the Finnish camp. And that's, of course, after he made his 50th appearance for the club. Not only that, on the theme of internationals, it's challenge time. Oh. So if we're going to come back to the table, we've got to do a challenge. It's a food challenge. So we're going to have five different dishes, boys, mm -hmm. from seven of the nations that our lads were representing on the international break. So there's seven countries in there, we'll get onto that later. We then have to guess the snack from the country the players were playing for. Carly, you ain't winning this one. That's a win for me, it's food. Nah, 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 nah. I agree with I him. I mean, to be fair, you do eat from Iceland every day because you love a prawn ring, didn't you? Um, right, probably wow. going to get in trouble for that. Wow. Um, we would, of course, be talking football, so I think that is probably... <laughs> Alan shaking his head over there. One show back, probably <laughs> gone, didn't we? Prawn ring. Is, uh, We're no, back the, to Zoom, the prawn. Right? <laughs> We're back. The prawn ring. Um, we would, of course, be chatting football. Huddersfield tomorrow. But let's first get into the running, shall we? Because as we said, nine games to go. Yeah. All to play for. Um, of course, this show is going out on Friday night. Pre-recorded, though, in the week. So you guys would have seen results going on today on Good Friday that we won't have. Hopefully, they've gone our way. Um, Ambassador, though, in this running, does anyone else's results matter? Um, they do at times, but you have to focus on your own results, performances, take care of that, and things will eventually take care of themselves. But we may need to have a look over our shoulder and, and hopefully some other results may swing in our favour. But I think if we can go into this last nine games period, a bit much how we had the restart of last yeah. season, I think we'll be in good, good vein of form for that. Right. What, what are the dangers, Carly, if you do start looking too much at other people's fixtures? I think you can, you can almost end up losing focus on your own mm. self because you're constantly kind of looking who's getting what and who's, and who's not. I think the most important thing is that you know, we concentrate on ourselves and what we are delivering and, and the results we're getting. And anything you know, outside of that is, 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 a, is seen as a bonus. But as long as we do what we need to do and, and pick up as many points as we can in this, this nine game run in, um, we put ourselves in, in a good place. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look at the season so far. And, and we sit in fourth position, 68 points from 37 games. Um, Carly, what would your assessment be of the season so far, mate? Um, I think I think it's been I think it's been good overall. I think obviously the last few months have been a little bit indifferent. Um, we haven't quite had the results that we've seen previously, 
um, it's easy to look look at it now and think, oh, you know, be a bit negative about it. But when you look at it on a whole, if this question was asked at the beginning of the season that we would be in this position that we're in now, I think everyone would have taken it. Um, and I think, we, you know, we, we've still got a really good chance. So it's just about kind of how we finish now and, and how we move forward. Mm -hmm. How do you think the league in general then compares? Because as we said, we, we are eight points better off. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you think this league compares to last season, Zeke? Oof. Great question. Um, Thanks, hopefully, man. I can g give him a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, COVID's affected everybody. Um, you know, you've seen. Obviously, there's no fans in the stadium, which is not not a great thing to have. But has that been used to its maximum effect at, at clubs? Um, maybe less pressure on players at times. But I think the the general standard of the league. I think it's a, it's been a good one. Um, Norwich are the outstanding side so far this season. Watford seem to be trying to stretch yeah. and get away from the rest of the pack. But I think it's a very good side um, in terms of, well not side, but a league in terms of, you've got teams like uh, Barnsley that have come on a mad run of late and really put themselves in a position to like cause a few problems. Um, but it's a very competitive league. I, I, I like the league better than last year, I'd say. What have we done well this year? Where have we been strong? I think obviously the, the main thing is, is scoring goals. Yeah. You know, we've got a, a genuine goal scorer. We've had genuine goal scorers in the past, but I think this one is, I've, I would say, a cut above the rest in terms of, for me, is a proper number nine, yeah. one that can link up play, definitely gets the goals, brilliant penalty taker, loves the pressure, and you have to love the pressure as a number nine. So I think that's been our, our main strength. I think as a, as, a, as a team and a squad, I think that's... That's settled as well. I think we've got good, a good squad of players that can compete, um, and we've got the capabilities of, of finishing the season high. You mentioned it now. I asked both of you in the week, who would you pick out from the season? I mean, yeah. I think most people are going to say him. You said yeah. Ivan. Both of you. Are. Do you mm. think he'll break that championship record of, of Glenn Murray's? I hope he does. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fantastic for him, and obviously fantastic for the club. Um, He's, he's been unbelievable this season and the great thing about it is he's come straight in and done it from the off, hasn't yeah. he? You know? So it, it's good, I hope he does do it and I think he's got a good chance of doing it. He's two guys off, he's got nine games to go, you'd like to think. Yeah. If he don't, we're, <laughs> in a bit, we're in a bit of bother if he don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, we're going into these last nine games, we'll be looking to improve on, on recent results as, as especially, but what areas from this season do you think the boys will be working on to, to improve on, Marcus? Oh, he's given me all the he's tough hey, he's he's good I've had a break today. in I have come back I was going to say that he's, had a, he's really had a few weeks to Google some week. questions <laughs> see where everyone else has been delivering <laughs> jeez what can I say to that the squad's it's evolving it's it's adapting to obviously what we're all adapting to outside the game in yeah. life um, that has to be taken in as a credit to the squad of players the medical staff as well making sure players are fit and available for selection um, that's a massive plus point. Um, and we've seen the emergence of players coming through. We've seen Salmon come through. Bit of a slow start, but we've seen the, the true qualities of what he's done over the recent months. We've seen Tariq come through, uh, Madsbeck Sorensen come through, albeit he's playing in a, you know, a position that is not naturally his, but I think he's done reasonably well in that. So there's a lot of positives out of this season. Um, the big thing for me is the, the loss of injury to, to Rico. Because I think he would have been up there as one of the yeah. players of the season for me with yeah. his strong performances every week. And this international break that we've just had has done us the world mm -hmm. of good. It's come at the exact same time as lockdown did. 37 games in, 37 <laughs> games in now. Um, the feeling when we came back from lockdown was very much like the pressure was off us. Mm. Carly, do you think that's the same vibe now as well? I don't think it probably is. Really? I think just because of the form we was in and where we was in position-wise and, and stuff like that, um, but I think, I think the players will uh, the players will put pressure on themselves um, to perform and, and obviously want to get results and, and that's what it needs to be. Um, but now it's just about making sure they come back and, and transfer you know that that pressure within and, and putting that into performances. Um, so that that's really a key part of it. Mm. Another thing people talk about and we'll speak about this as well is that's a run in and the upcoming fixtures. Right? Mm. Does schedule have any impact because? Let's look at our next two games. They come a day after everyone else has played. Does that affect things? And Marcus, how does it work? Oof. Fixtures at this time of season, it, it, it could be anything right now in terms of the timings because the broadcasters want particular teams to play. Um, again, we can't really, we can't control that. 
all we can do is control our controllables, <coughs> play our fixtures, win that fixture if you can, and then move on to the next one. It's that old cliche. Game at a time. I know you hate it, but... No, I'm on board with it now. I'm on board of it. Game I'm on board of it. Game at a time. So, our run of games, they're, they're, they're quite reasonable. We should be looking to win the majority of those games. Other teams, I think, like Watford have got a really tough run in yeah. with the sort of top five or six they have to play. Yeah. Is that going to play some part? I think so, because they're not going to win every game, that's for sure. But we have to be in a position of we can capitalise on any sort of slip-ups by those sides. Yeah. Well, let, let's have a little look at our fixtures. Here they are on the screen. So the left column are the ones first. So Huddersfield away, Birmingham at home, Preston away, Millwall at home, Cardiff at home, Bournemouth away, Rotherham, Watford at home, and then Bristol City. Um, is there such thing as a good set of fixtures, Carly? Uh, and is that it? You could Listen, you can say there is, but I think, you know, when you're playing the teams down down there who are fighting for relegation, I think it's mm. they're, they're some of the worst ones to play for because they are scrapping for everything. There's so much on them. Um, me personally, I always prefer playing the teams that were kind of mid-table and teams that were around wherever we were because you can take the points off those teams and you're hoping the mid-table teams are starting to like think about their holidays. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, the, when you look on paper, you think to yourself, oh, that's a, that's a nicer run-in. But when it comes to match mm. day, that can all change very quickly. So, um, they, they, I've said it before, they just need to focus on them. Like, yeah. I, me personally, I would probably do something where I wouldn't even let the boys look at the, the league table for the next, I don't know, six games mm. and just focus on, we win everything. Yeah. That's it. One track mind, fully focused. We win everything and we pick it up from there. But that's very hard though with yeah, the modern course, day technology. The, yeah. Well, every journalist will be asking exactly. about yeah, it, which things is the like problem. that. Um, so again, I, I like to hear you mm. guys' perspective from the, from on the pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So when you play a team that's battling relegation in this run in versus a team that's going for promotion, what are the differences when you play those two sides? Will, will the relegation side be less likely to attack because they're, they're maybe a point might be enough, or do they need the three points? How does it work? Will they be less open, or how does it work, Carly, mate? I think. I think with the, the, the teams that are fighting for relegation, a lot of them come out more attacking, especially if they're in the free and they need the win. Um, I think you know the, the top teams when you're playing them, you kind of up, you're up for them games anyway, aren't you? Because mm -hmm. it's a top of the table clash, so to speak. So you're up for them games more naturally. But when you have to go and play a team that's down the bottom, and you know it's going to be a horrible game more than mm -hmm. likely, it's going to be scrappy, things like that. Um, that can have an impact on you. But yeah, a lot of the time, those, those teams down there, they're fighting for everything, so they will come at you. Because they have to, they have, no other, they have no other option. And at times, some of those, the, the teams at the bottom, they would, they would know your ambition mm. and they will de deliberately throw a spanner yeah. in your ambition in, in thinking, you know what, if we can stop you not winning, we're happy with that. They may right. not want you to get promoted. Yeah. I've been yeah. in situations like that and you know that's the mentality of your position. Just throw a spanner in your works to frustrate you yeah. um, and, and put their own ambitions to the side. They say taking a point against Brentford at any time of the season is a big point for us. Well, we, it's weird you say, I'm not going to say this is, this is what will happen, but you look at, as we mentioned, Watford's fixtures. Mm -hmm. Well, one fixture that stands out for me there is Luton. Mm -hmm. Luton Town, their biggest rivals, yeah. will probably want to take points off Watford. And then when you look at the other teams they've got to play, Reading, um, Norwich, Millwall, us and Swansea in their last mm -hmm. six games. Um, uh, we've, we've kind of mentioned they're running already Watford's and no matter what, that last six run of fixtures is going to have an impact on who gets promoted from this league, isn't it? Whether it's them, us, Swansea, Barnsley yeah. Yeah. or anyone else, right? Well, as I said, there's going to be some spanners in there. Luton's a very good side, according to one of our cameramen, not too far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they're going to cause problems. They, they've taken points off some of the teams up top already, so dangerous customer to, to come up against. Um, but with, as Carly keeps saying, we need to just focus on our own set of games, make sure we get the points required in each of those games to put ourselves in a strong position because there are going to be some slip-ups by teams in that top six. Uh, on that points required, I mean, Traditionally, you've needed about 89 points. Mm. Last year was a lot less, well, six points less, 83. And there's no point in us saying we need this because it just puts added pressure right. Yeah, it's just like you say, take one game as it comes. Well, it was, of course, international break last week, and we had 14 players playing for seven different nations. And I've always wanted to know what goes on in an international camp, so I spent my Saturday night chatting to Marcus Force all the way from Kiev to find out what goes on in the Finland camp and also to discuss. 50 appearances in a Brentford shirt. Here we go. 
Marcus, how are you, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Very well. It's Saturday night. I'm sat here in Witten. Whereabouts are you? <laughs> I'm in Ukraine, Kiev. What? And that's because you've got Ukraine tomorrow night in a World Cup qualifier, right? Yes, that's true. First of all, what's the room like? Do they, do they pick you up in decent hotels? Can you, can you show yeah. us anything? It's pretty messy, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a Hil- it's a Hilton hotel, so it's very nice. They're looking after you. They're looking after you. Yeah. But when you're away, do you get to see much of these places? Not much at the moment because of the COVID situation that we have to stay in a bubble. So it's pretty much hotel and, and training and that's it. But, but before that, usually you could do lots of stuff when you go abroad, which is nice. A silly question. Well, it might be a silly question. You see, when you go away, do you eat Finnish food in the Finnish camps? Uh, no, we we have our own chef, but it's got the like the the country what we go to. It's got their food. It, he cooks it. Oh wow! So you'll be eating Ukrainian food while you while you're there. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, he, he hasn't he hasn't been bad so far. <laughs> it's been pretty good. In England, you get a cap, and Christian Norgard was saying that they get like a pin for Denmark. What do you guys get when you make an appearance? To be honest, I don't know because I haven't got anything yet. So I think it's like a mini, like a, how do you say, you know, where their captains give like a, the like a pennant. National, yeah, like you get like a mini versions of them. Well, look, mate, you, you've taken to international football pretty well. Goal on your debut, not only that, against the world champions. <laughs> Did you not think, right, might as well retire from international football today? <laughs> don't get much better. <laughs> Yeah, it was in my mind, but uh, no. <laughs> that's got to be up there with the best night of your life, isn't it, surely? Yes, yeah, that's, uh, it was a pretty special moment for me and my family, but yeah, it's something to build on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting you mentioned your family there, because obviously you come from a big football family, and your biggest fan is, of course, your mum. She was loving it that night on social media. Um, I bet she can't wait to see you playing live again soon. Yeah, that's, that's so true. It's been, uh, obviously, without fans, it's been uh, not that great, but obviously the fans bring another uh, lift to the game. And obviously when your family comes to watch, it gives you another boost as well, which is nice. Is she as rowdy at games as she is on Twitter? Yes. (laughs) Yes! 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 So can you hear her when you're playing? Me, no, but uh, everyone, like, if there's like my dad or my girlfriend comes to watch with her, they always say that she's quite loud, so, yeah. <laughs> well, she's had plenty to shout about because you've had a, a great career so far. And last week, of course, you hit 50 appearances for Brentford. Let's go back to when you first joined the club. And you, you joined the B team, obviously, from West Brom. How different was that to youth team football at West Brom joining Brentford B? As soon as I joined, I knew, noticed the difference. You're so close to the first team, like it's literally a second team, I say, in Europe. So I like that concept very much that if you do well, there's only first team to go to, which is nice. In like academies, there's a lot of, like if you're in the 18s, there's 21s and then sometimes even 23s. And there's a lot of lot, lot of players in your way. But in Brentford, there's, if, if you're good enough, you're going to get a chance, So which I like very much. Well, you, you certainly were good enough because 21 goals in 34 appearances, Player of the Year. It wasn't long before yourself and Mads Beck Sorensen were promoted to that first team group. Then you, you seem pretty unflappable, mate, if I'm being honest. You seem like nothing phases you. Then you score in your debut again against South End. How did you find the step up? It helped a lot when I had the whole pre-season with the first team, which is getting to know the players and the coaching staff and the way that obviously the differences between the game styles between the B team and the first team. It was a, a, quite a big step up, to be honest. It takes a lot more, lot more than just the, the one pre-season to get used to, but I think I coped with it quite well at the start. You mean you, you go with it quite well, you did pretty well, this is, but that's what you do, you score in your debut wherever you go. In, in those three years with the first team now, you've worked with like Neil, Ollie, Ivan, some amazing strikers day in, day out. What have you gained from each of them? Obviously, we're all different players, but yeah, you can see in training and games, you can see how their quality and uh, what they can show, they're all different kind of strikers, as I said, and you just look at 
some of them play and train you, you try and get much information and uh, like w movements and stuff off them and learn as much as possible really do you think that's helped them because they were all three different strikers if you see what i mean so you've been able to pick up different things yeah but obviously like i'm i'm sort of quite a tall striker and i'm quite not that tall but different kind of striker so i'm beyond new and ollie what, that's that's more my style. How about that loan at Wimbledon? What, what did that do for your development? Because, uh, mate, I know that uh, we've, we've, we've mentioned we've got a mutual friend, Anthony Wordsworth, but I know it's a pretty lively changing room, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he, he's, a, he, he's a legend around there. He's a very nice guy. But yeah, the loan itself was unbelievable, to be honest. It was, it was like the real first step that, like, when you come, you see the real world, like, go see how. I did play with Brentford that one season, but he was in and out, so you didn't play that much. But when you have to play and fight for points for survival, it's the real game. And obviously, going there and scoring a lot of goals was good for my confidence and good for my development. Yeah, you scored a lot of goals, you won an award as well. Everywhere you go, you score goals and you win awards. Woody actually said to me that he said, you're the best finisher he's ever played with. And he's had a long career at high level. How much do you work on your finishing, or is it come natural to you? Every every day, really. To be honest, even even when I have days off, sometimes I just look at clips of other strikers finishing, and like, just sometimes you even look at my games and some some situations where I could have done better, or where I had a, even had a good where I scored and it wasn't a great finish, and you'd be like, what can I do better? But yeah, all the time, really, it's something I'd never really be satisfied with. So hang on, you scored goals and you've still been hard on yourself that it wasn't a good enough finish. But you scored. Yeah, some, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you like you maybe a cross and you miss hit it. Some not not miss hit it, but I haven't got the good connection. But it still goes in. You'd be like, all right, it's a goal. But sometimes, like next time, I need to get a better contact. <laughs> you're too hard on yourself. That's probably why you're doing so well. Marcus Gale, who I do the show with, he said. He played against a young Alan Shearer at youth team level and he said that you remind him of a young Alan Shearer. Who were the strikers that you kind of looked up to or, or maybe still do? Uh, I, I watched a lot of buying games, so Lewandowski is something I, I re really like. He's my favourite player. I'm a Man United fan, so Berbatov, Rooney, Tevez, all of them guys. It's just unbelievable to watch on TV. The players you've mentioned there, Berbatov obviously loved to like caress the ball and place the finishes. Rooney and Tevez could really drill and smash a finish. You can do both as well, but what yeah. do you prefer? Smash. Do you? Yes. Uh, yes. If you ask any of the keepers at Brentford, they probably hate me because uh, even in some situations where I'm like three, four yards out, I'll still smash it just to make sure it goes in the net. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, well, I look forward to seeing you smash a lot more in for Brentford and hopefully at international level for Finland. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. Love that from Marcus Force. I don't know why. I, I, I thought it. I don't think it's a dumb question me asking him what food they eat in a Finnish camp. Mm -hmm. But when you went away with Jamaica, what food would you eat? Would you eat Jamaica food or would you eat the country that you're playing in's food? We brought our own chef. So That's what had, I imagined. We had jerk chicken, Akian saltfish, really? ball dumpling. Yeah, see. Even That's what I expected. Cheese for snacks. I thought they'd eat Finnish food, That's but proper. when they were in Ukraine, they're eating Ukrainian food. Anyway, well, look, <laughs> talking of foods and internationals, it's challenge time as we this, play. That's right, we're playing International Duty Snack Wars. You wanted to call it Food for Thought, didn't you? Yeah, I think it sounds good considering you're thinking about what country the food's from. But exactly. Yeah, it was probably a better name, but I'm calling it International you Snack You do Wars. come up with very good names. I like oh, them. Hey, we've been so He's nice top. to each other, haven't <laughs> we, at the moment? These tops. Oh, that's, keep that in the edit. Um, look, in case I haven't mentioned it already, we had 14 players away on international duty. So, the challenge is, we brought out a dish from one of the nations that the players were playing for. So, we had Matthias Jensen, Henrik, Christian Nilgaard, and the two Mads away with the Denmark full mm -hmm. squad and the under-21s. Marcus Force for the Finland full squad and Jako Oksanen with the under-21s. Ethan made his debut for Jamaica. Vitaly Janel with uh, Germany under-21s. Finn Stevens, Nathan Shepard, Joe Adams with Wales under-21s. And then they played against Alex Gilbert's Republic of Ireland under-21s with Alex coming out on top there. And finally, 
Patrick Gunnarsson was with Iceland's under 21s. So, the snack will be in front of us, we have a taste, and then we lift the flag of the country we think the snack's from. Mm -hmm. By the way, there's only five, and obviously we've got seven to pick from, and then if it's a tie, we'll have a tiebreaker. Right, Alan Shepherd over there, aka One Job, aka Titch, Here he is. aka Ta Sam Thompson. This is our first dish. Um, it's looking kind of familiar. Looks like crisps, to be honest. This looks you like. You can see it there. Um, I think, mm, I think, I think we might have a Yeah. I think we can just have a taste and then. Where can that come from, though? It's got no taste to it whatsoever. It's alright. Yeah. This is football snack. Are we going for this? Yeah, go with it. I'm going strong with this. Mm. I think it's Tato. You going for that, yeah? I'm going for this, Martin Crisps. Well, I've got I've got the answers here. Go on then. It was banana chips from Jamaica! No! Blind, there you go. Blind They're crisp. apparently light, flavourful, well, not flavourful, and crispy. Nah, this is dead. A unique Blighten. recipe. These are the salted ones. You played for Jamaica and well, you got that wrong. Right, what this is? looks like licorice. Oh! Right. I'm back early. That could take out a filling. I'm going to say I've nearly lost a tooth. But that is licorice ain't for me. That's, li that's going, some kind of licorice. I'm going in. Yeah, in Germany. I'm going in Germany. I'm going early. I'm going in. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. We're going to Iceland. Yeah, I'm going to go Iceland. We're all wrong. Salted licorice from Denmark. Oh. Scandinavians apparently love salty licorice. And the stronger and saltier, the better. This is what I think it is. I thought these were going to be nice, Shepherd, and this one stinks. This is, um, it looks like the bottom of your foot. <laughs> that is horrific. Oh, God. What's that? Is that plasterboard? Like cardboard or something, man. Right? No, I don't. I can't, mm. I can't even bite that. Mm. Loads of smell, no taste. The aftertaste makes me think of one thing. I'm going. I thought it might be saltfish, because you said when you went away with Jamaica, you had saltfish. Ah. And it looks like fish, and it's salty. It was fish jerky from Iceland. Oh my fish God. A traditional Icelandic food. Dried fish is often called fish jerky because of its tough Texture. So this cod has been dried in Iceland since. <coughs> oh no, cod has been dried in Iceland since Viking times. Not this stuff. But that's oh, just. No, mm. it's a good thing cod. you can't fly anywhere because they let me in nowhere. <laughs> cod jerky. Oh, oh this looks Sweetie. good. Hang on. So who's going first? Is that going to be? A cr oh, well, this nice. Smells very. I recognise the smell. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to say I think it's hard, mate. <laughs> I ain't going down that route. Oh my god. Well nice, eh? This is childhood memory stuff. This is good. I'm going to take a pack out of me. I love it. I have no yeah. idea where it's from, though. I'm going with that. Well, it ain't Jamaica, that's for sure. I'm going to stick with my mates. I've done them three <laughs> times. Maybe you're just hoping on Lord Average that one of them is going to be from <laughs> Please, let me get one in. No chance. Never been Welsh, these. No, we're all wrong again. Who's it? It's Clove Rock from Ireland. Oh, oh, that's oh. Really good. I didn't from A Ireland, strong though. tasting sweet. Yeah, it ain't strong. Clothes. That ain't strong tasting. Nah, taste for clove. That's um, what it is, yeah. Plenty of clove. No other sweet comes close, especially on cold days. Mm. <laughs> Shepherd, did you write this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, tourist board. Oh, by the way, that's it. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I never showed you lot, but that is the what we're about to eat. Oh yeah, that's a bit of me. That's just pure chocolate. Oh, there's a bit of nut in there. Yeah, it's a bit bueno, isn't it? So as mm. you can see here, they're probably ding dang do, as they say, as Ollie Ball's mate <laughs> says. I'm going to Germany. Oh, you going, you're going Germany. Don't look the same. No. <laughs> you just you just made the game boring because then no one can. Yeah. Like, if it's Finland, I'm going to be livid. Oh. This is a crispy wafer called Hanuta from Germany. Yeah, see, but you thought we actually wanted to go to Germany. Well. Nah, but come on, play the game. <laughs> out, play the game. <laughs> this is what Harry wanted Germany's what, most popular snacks, obviously. Yeah, but that's why I wanted to go to Germany. It's made of cocoa, hazelnut cream put between mm. two wafers. Wow. Right, this one looks well good as well. 
Mm. Oh. That is sweet, man. That is well good. Three, two, it was written to me. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought like this was a move. I mean, it doesn't really matter, it's about sweets, isn't it? Three, two, one. It's got to be finished. Bring it home, there's a winner. Here it is. Uh oh, soft top. Oh. 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 Dumb, I'm not going to say. Dumle, a delicious chewy toffee covered in creamy milk chocolate. Let me see how it's written. Manufactured in Van La. Dumle? Dumle? <sighs> you know what? And that's where you live. I remember that sweet. Anyway, that was a bit of fun, and that was. Oh, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Hey? Eh? Yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. For you, yeah. Ooh, I finished you off. You cheated, you uh, you cheated your way there, didn't you? I did cheat a little bit, I'm gonna admit I cheated, but I'm proud of it. Are you proud of it? I don't care, mate. You gotta win, you gotta do what you can to win. I agree with that at times. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not friends. I'm, I'm, a cheat. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a cheater, that's not me. That's not for me. I win you by giving the best of myself. You're a loser. It's too all overall. You lost. Anyway, right, enough of that silliness. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> livid. Um, this show's about four hours long because we've just been messing around the whole time. Um, how does it feel tomorrow? Feels like ages since that opening. Um, home game victory back in brrr, what, September probably now, 3-0 mm. win, um, Josh De Silva, Marcus Force and Brian Mbomo. Um, it was a pretty comfortable win that day, wasn't it Marcus? Yeah, it was a good performance, good win, saw some good goals being scored and um, yeah, we could really do with that sort of performance again and result. Their team is very different to that day, so it's easy Carly to go, all oh, right, we should win this match tomorrow, but it's a very different looking side. Uh, Richard Keogh's obviously brought in, we'll talk about him in a sec. Um, Last game, apparently, they played a 3 4 2 1. They've really been normally playing a 3 4 3 or a 4 3 3. So I don't know how true this is, but we've got a graphic of it there. This 3 4 2 1, if they do play it, where are the strengths and where are the weaknesses in this formation? Um, I think the strength's going to be kind of in midfield. Um, you know, they're going to try and overload it in there. Um, I think their weaknesses is, depending on what kind of you know, formation we play, I think the opportunity to pin um, their wing backs back. Um, and keep their, their free back as well gives us big opportunities and out wide we could you know we could double up on them and, and possibly create more opportunities. So when you said that do you think we would change our system to do that or can we do that in the current system? What would be the best formation against this basically? I think for me I would go with like a 3-5-2 personally I think um, I think you can then counteract what's going on in the midfield mm. Um, as well as it gives you the options out wide to hopefully pin them back as well and pin their wide players back. Because ultimately, the, the, the four that they're going to have in midfield, the two wide ones are ultimately just yeah. wing backs. So if you mm. can pin them back more, as well as counteract, counteracting what they're trying to do in the midfield by overloading it, you put yourself in a real strong position. Is that risky that this stage of season change in formation, Marcus? It can be, but you know players have to be adaptable. Yeah. Everyone's got to be adaptable in this current day. Um, but I think if we stick to our guns and keep our own shape, our strength is down to wide, wide areas. So if we can stay focused on that um, and get past them in that area, we're always going to cause problems. A lot of our goals have come from wide areas and those sort of situations. Brian's got, what, 10 assists or more. So you, ha you have to put him with confidence to, to keep doing that. One battle that's going to be interesting is Richard Keogh versus Ivan Tony. If they both play, it's going to be a great watch, isn't it, mate? Yeah, it will be. It'll be a good battle. Um, and, you know, Ivan's been fantastic. Um, you know, Richard Keogh, he's, he's a good defender, had a good championship career, but <laughs> he, he can get sometimes emotionally involved a bit, which could play into to Ivan's hands because he, mm. he seems to have a knack of winding defenders up as well, which is great. So Ivan knows what he's doing. He'll be at it no matter what. Um, and hopefully he comes out on top. You don't really have to wind Keo up too much anyway. <laughs> say, yeah. He plays with the whites of his eyes always from the minute yeah. one. So yeah. I, if I was up again, I would love to see that because I know he's on the edge. Yeah. And I would do things to tip him over that edge. Just little things, little pinch here, there and everywhere. And, and just get his, his brain over that edge where he's going to make a rash decision. Yeah. And that's going to benefit your team. He's a player. He is a a player though, isn't he? To be fair, Kia, I, yeah. I do like him, I do like him. Um, how big would a win tomorrow be to set the tone on this running, mate? That's massive. Sets the tone from minute one. You know, you, you go, you come back off international uh, break, straight into mm. a win, the confidence is then sky high, everyone's feeling good, yeah. and you just keep that momentum going then. Keep that momentum going. Big want. last push, it's exciting. <laughs> and remember the game tomorrow is live on Sky Sports, 12.30 for that one. And Tuesday night, we're back 
live on YouTube with all the pre-match action ahead of the Birmingham City game. The B team are also playing on Sunday. What a few days we've got of football coming up. That game is at Bishan Abbey and all updates will be available throughout the day. Um, you're also on iFollow on Tuesday night, isn't you, mate? Yes, I'm on iFollow on Tuesday night as well, so I'll be uh, commentating, so I'm looking forward to that. It's always good fun. And match programmes, as always, available on the Curtis Sport website and your iFollow passes from brentfordfc.com forward slash iFollow. It's been great to be back in person. I think we've been excitable today, wouldn't we? We've probably been a bit over the yeah. top of parts, <laughs> yeah. but hopefully people have stuck with us. But a uh, bit of fun, wasn't it? No, it was good. It's good to be back. Yeah. Good to see you guys in the flesh. I've shared a bit of, I've had a lot of sugar and when I have a lot of sugar I become really annoying so sorry um, but thanks for watching uh, one big last push stay safe have a great weekend and come on you bees you reds